you on YouTube all the time. Do you really? Of course I do. Oh my god. Yeah, of course I do. Did everybody hear that? <laughs> of course I do. <laughs> Why is your book titled My Monster and Me? When I think about my anxiety as a child, I used to look at it as a monster and it only seemed fitting to call it My Monster and Me. So it's about anxiety and me. How and why were you inspired to write about it? Growing up with anxiety, living with anxiety, it's something that you go to bed with, you wake up in the morning with, and it was something that's, it's something that's with me all the time. And I was in bed and I just thought, I am going to write a book about anxiety for children and I think it's something that doesn't really exist and it's my first ever venture into children's picture books so um, I'm really excited I'm really proud of it. So the book did your kids help design it ideas anything? This was a very much a um, a, a sole project. When I write cookbooks my kids are always involved because you know I'm testing recipes and they're eating them and trying them out and so with this this was very much me on my own really having to take myself back to what it was like when I was six or seven. So why would parents want to read this to their children? I think it's a, it's a really good tool to ex explain anxiety in a more tangible form, in the form of a monster. And this monster isn't scary, you know. It's, it's lovely because when I wrote the book, it had to have a happy ending, because it does. You know, it, you can live with it and, it is, and it's there. And, you know, it just, I just wished a book like this existed when I was a kid and somebody would read it to me so I could understand anxiety and feeling stressed. When did you first start suffering from anxiety? I think I noticed it more as a teenager, but now if I really think about it and I look back, I, I would say maybe six or seven. Quite scary because my son's turning five this year, so then they're so little that only maybe next year, like these are the sort of emotions that he might be going through. Yeah, I just, I can't believe, you know, I can't quite believe that I felt the way I did at 15 was exactly the same as what I felt at six or seven. And I worry about my kids now who are like they're 13, 12 and nine. So I worry about them. When you were young, because obviously you didn't have your anxiety diagnosed, did you? So what did you think it was? I didn't really know what it was, but when you're at school and the teacher says, oh, she's just an anxious person or she's just a bit of a worrier. She just worries about everything. That was the label, I suppose, that I was given. I'm just the one that worries a lot or I feel anxious about everything. Um, and I suppose that's all it was. I didn't know, just like many people even now as adults don't really know what anxiety is and I didn't know then. Can you tell us a bit what it was like to have anxiety? I'd basically worry about everything, uh, which made me an anxious mum. So I'd worry about my kids. I'd worry about their routine. I'll be here with you, but actually what I'm doing is I'm actually thinking about like, have my kids gotten off to school okay? I'm offended. Like, yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm here. I'm thinking about you, uh, but I'm slightly thinking about what they're doing and I'm worried about what they're in. And, and, and I think to myself, is that just being a mum though? I think it is, because the back of my mind, I'm thinking about Isla. Yeah. It, is she okay? Like, she's, she's here. Yeah. She's here in the background cooing. Um, but I'm almost always anxious. I'm always almost always worried or always worrying about the routine. And part of me's kind of accepted that a little bit. It's just, it's just who I am. Can you tell us about the technique sitting on the step? If you're feeling sad and you can't say it or it's not coming out and you don't know how to say it and you're not sure, if you're having like mixed emotions and you don't know what to say or how to say or who to say it to, we have the step. So you go and sit on the step and the rule is that if anyone sees you on the step, they will come and ask you what's wrong or they will come and sit next to you and then you can say or not say, or you can just sit with somebody on the step. And it's made such a difference for us because even for me as a mum, sometimes I really struggle. So what I do I'm is- I'm getting emotional thinking <laughs> about that. Because I feel like if I had that as a kid, that would have been so good. Yeah, yeah. Like even for me as a child, if I had that, I know what difference it would have made. Yeah. Um, but now as a mum, I sometimes just sit on the step and, and my kids just know. <laughs> 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 I made you cry. I've got. To, I have to do one interview and not make someone cry. Pan. Oh no! <laughs> Don't cry. Don't cry because I. I think. I think. I wish I had. Uh, we need some tissue in here, guys. Someone give us a tissue, please. I've got one, but it's mucky. It doesn't taste like liquid, does it? Sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Can you give some tips for parents of children suffering with anxiety? I think parents need to be able to recognise when a child is feeling low and to be able to say, OK, this is not normal or they're not feeling the way they would normally. So to be able to recognise those feelings. Another tip would be don't blame yourself. I think we have to remind ourselves. I think we're better at that whole parenting thing if we don't blame ourselves. We wouldn't blame ourselves if our kids had a cold. 
Um, so why would we blame ourselves if they've got anxiety? So don't blame yourself. And I think that is, that is by far the most important thing is don't blame yourself because it isn't your fault. Thank you so much for coming in. Thank it's you. been emotional um, and I hope the book does really, really well. Thank you.